In this video, we highlight how a tibia and fibula that are broken in multiple locations can be reconstructed from CT images using segmentation tools in MIMIX. Create a new project and select the proper DICOM file. Open the lower body CT images. Select the threshold tool from the segment menu and activate the mask 3D preview. The predefined threshold, bone CT, will be used. Using the crop box that you see on the 2D images limits the affected region to the lower legs. Control your results in the 3D preview. Isolate the lower left leg from the non-connected entities with the Region Grow tool from the Segment menu. Click on the region of interest and a yellow mask will be created. Rename this new mask to Left Tibia plus Fibula plus Foot by double-clicking on the mask name. Use the Split Mask tool from the Segment tab. This tool allows splitting a single mask into two or more separate masks. Select the right mask and make sure to add extra regions in order to split the initial mask into two fibula parts, two tibia parts and the foot in one operation. You can always change the brush diameter by either using the control key while dragging the right mouse button or by dragging the handle under brush diameter in the split mask window. Scroll through the coronal and sagittal images to find suitable regions to highlight the different parts. Marking a few images for each part should be enough to obtain a good split of the initial masks. When finished, click OK. You should obtain five new masks, one for each of the selected fragments. You can see that the lower density of the trabecular bone excludes it from the masks. The Smart Fill tool from the Segment menu can be used to solve this. Select the mask that you want to fill in and choose either of the methods that are available in this tool. The Global method automatically fills in the holes depending on a chosen hole closing distance expressed in voxels. Rename the mask. A smaller hole closing distance means that less features will be added to the model. It's recommended to start with a small distance and increase it if the result is judged insufficiently filled. Experiment using the image to find a suitable distance that covers up all the holes on the inner side of the bone. This way, the inclusion of too many unwanted features is avoided. The local tool enables you to manually select the region that should be filled in the 2D images. The brush diameter can be adjusted. You can use a combination of the global and local filling tools. Use the brush to mark holes that haven't been filled in automatically. Use the Calculate Part tool from the Segment menu to turn the finalized masks of the tibia and fibula into STL format 3D models. Perform wrapping and smoothing operation on all the 3D models to obtain a smoother result. Turn on the contours visibility of the different bone parts to verify the accuracy of the segmentation.
Use the Export tool from the File tab to export the final 3D objects to Trimatic for further processing. Connect the four different parts into one. Go to the Design tab and select Create Primitive. Then choose Create Cylinder. Choose two points as the method and 3mm as the radius. A connecting cylinder between the tibia and fibula can now be constructed by selecting one point on the surface of each of them. After creating the cylinder, select the Move Surface operation in the Design tab and extend both the top and bottom surfaces with a set distance. This way, a clean connection is made between the bone and the cylinder connector. Repeat this process until you are satisfied with the resulting model. Perform a Boolean union operation to generate one model combining all parts together. Go to the Fix menu and select Fix Wizard. Select Union Result and perform a full analysis. Click Follow Advice repeatedly until only the overlapping triangles remain present in the analysis result. All features that could make the 3D printing of the part go wrong have now been corrected. Go to the File menu and select Export to STL. Choose the desired output directory and click Apply. You have now exported an STL file that is ready for printing. Thanks for watching this tutorial. 